Think of nothing. What comes to mind? Is it the depth of infinite space? Is it the color black? Is it silence? Nothing is way more complicated than it seems. In fact, when you start digging into what nothing really means, you quickly find yourself in a maze of physics, philosophy, and mind-bending paradoxes. And interestingly, nothing might actually be something after all. We have four options with us today, and one of them might even tell us what nothing is made of. Let's find out. Before we can figure out what nothing is made of, we need to define what it means. That sounds simple, but trust me, it's a nightmare. Is nothing the absence of everything, or just the lack of anything we can observe? Philosophers have been arguing about this for centuries. Take the ancient Greeks, for example. Some, like Parmenides, argued that nothing can't even exist. His reasoning? For nothing to exist, it would have to be something, which means it's not, really, nothing. Confused? Exactly. Parmenides claimed that even the concept of nothing is an illusion. Meanwhile, Aristotle had a different take. He thought of nothing as the absence of substance, but still within a space. In other words, nothing was more like an empty container waiting to be filled. Fast forward a couple of thousand years, and modern physics has taken this debate to a whole new level. Turns out, nothingness isn't just an empty void. When scientists look closer, like on a quantum level, they find that nothing is buzzing with activity. It's not a quiet, empty void. It's more like a chaotic, unpredictable mess. But more on that later. All right, let's talk about what most people think of as nothing, outer space. It's the perfect example, right? A giant expanse of nothingness, no air, no objects, just an endless void. But here's the kicker. Even the emptiest regions of space aren't truly empty. That's because in physics, empty space is anything but. Physicists describe space as a vacuum, and when you hear vacuum, you probably imagine a perfect emptiness. But even in a vacuum, there's still a little something going on. You've got electromagnetic fields, particles that pop in and out of existence, and energy that fluctuates all over the place. These fluctuations are known as quantum foam, and they're the key to understanding why nothing isn't really nothing. Quantum foam is a sea of tiny, temporary particles, like electrons and positrons, that constantly appear and disappear, even in the emptiest parts of space. They exist for just a fraction of a second, but during that time, they create a frothy, jittery mess of activity. And because these particles are so short-lived, they're called virtual particles. So even if you somehow manage to remove every atom, every particle of dust, and every bit of light from a region of space, you'd still have this bubbling quantum activity going on. In other words, the vacuum of space, the best candidate we have for nothing, isn't really empty. It's more like a roiling soup of almost something. So if even the vacuum of space is filled with quantum activity, what is nothing? This is where quantum mechanics comes in and completely breaks your brain. See, in the quantum world, Particles and energy don't behave like we expect. They're unpredictable, uncertain, and don't follow our everyday logic. And that's why nothing is a huge problem for physicists. Take Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, for example. It says there is inherent uncertainty in the act of measuring a variable of a particle. This constant uncertainty means that even in what looks like empty space, there's a baseline of energy that can't be eliminated. Physicists call this the zero-point energy, the lowest possible energy that even a vacuum has. This zero-point energy is why the concept of a totally empty, zero-energy nothingness just doesn't work. There's always something, even if that something is just the jittering energy of space itself. And then we have quantum field theory. It tells us that even in the absence of matter, space is filled with fields that can't be turned off. Every type of particle has a corresponding field, like the electron field or the photon field, that stretches across the entire universe. These fields don't go away just because there's no particle present. 
they still have a presence, and they still interact. So once again, our idea of a perfect nothing falls apart. Let's take it up a notch. What about the origin of the universe? If you go back far enough, like 13.8 billion years, there was a point where everything came from, well, seemingly nothing. But here's where things get really confusing. When physicists talk about the universe coming from nothing, they're not talking about nothing in the way you and I think about it. Theoretical physicists believe that the Big Bang might have emerged from a quantum fluctuation. Remember that quantum foam we talked about? Well, it's possible that one of these tiny fluctuations expanded, creating space, time, and everything else. But even this nothing had some form of energy, some potential for something to happen. So, when scientists say the universe came from nothing, they're actually referring to a state of extremely low energy, or maybe a different kind of nothing that still had the seeds of something. Yeah, it's a paradox wrapped in a riddle, and nobody really knows for sure what the nothing before the Big Bang actually was, or if it even existed. Bottom line, the nothing that birthed the universe wasn't empty. It was more like a mysterious something in disguise. Now we've got to ask the big question. Is true nothingness even possible? From a scientific perspective, it seems like the answer is no. Even if you strip away every atom, every photon, and every trace of matter, you're left with quantum fields, zero-point energy, and space-time itself. There's always something lurking in the background. Philosophers have been grappling with this concept forever. Some argue that true nothingness is beyond human comprehension. After all, when you try to picture nothing, you're still imagining something, like an empty black void. But even that's something. True nothing would have no space, no time, no fields, no possibility of anything. And if it's impossible to even imagine it, how could it exist? Others take a more practical approach. They argue that nothing is just a placeholder concept, a useful fiction that helps us describe the absence of things rather than a real existing state. It's a way to talk about what isn't there rather than what is. So what is nothing made of? Turns out, it's made of something. Whether it's quantum fields, a zero-point energy, or a frothing mess of virtual particles, what we think of as nothing is actually a busy, dynamic place. And if we ever did manage to find true nothing, it might just turn out that it's not really nothing at all. In the end, nothing might just be a concept that only exists in our heads. The universe, it seems, doesn't like being empty. It always finds a way to fill in the blanks, even when we think there's nothing left. So the next time someone tells you it's made of nothing, just remember, nothing is never really empty. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons before you run to switch on the lights.